What was your first like red pill moment? Um, I'm going to say it probably started with the divorce when, you know, you're, you married the wrong person. Okay. This isn't going to work out. I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to fix something that's not fixable. Let's just untie this knot and call it a day. Um, it's not as easy as that. And I think the first red pilling moment was when I got on the phone with my family lawyer and he did the prenup for me too. And I got on the phone with him, you know, a few years later and I said, look, you know, I think this isn't going to work out. We need to get out of this. Uh, you know, how do we get the ball rolling sort of thing? And he, it was a half an hour conversation. I'm driving my car and I was in a position where I was just like, are you serious? Like this, this is how things go in family law. I thought you just got divorced. I didn't realize that you've got issues to deal with like false domestic violence charges. You're probably not going to see your kid. If you're a father, you don't want to go to court. You're going to lose, you know, all of these things that sort of popped up in the conversation. I'm like, well, well, hold on a second. I thought men and women were equal. Like didn't, didn't feminism level the playing field for everybody and we can just part ways, but no, it's not that simple. So that was probably the first red pilling moment. I think it's also one of the first red pilling moments for a lot of guys too, is when they start going through the divorce machine as well. There's def definitely a lot of sticky areas in there and whether if kids are involved or in sort of like the, the, the direction that that usually goes with custody or I, I don't know, I, I have been divorced, but I don't have kids. Um, but also just, you know, even talking about like allegations, like women do get away with a lot. I really think there's a lot on both sides. Like there's a lot that men get away with. There's a lot that women get away with. And it's a matter of just stopping the bullshit of getting away with something and just be have integrity and have honor and do the right thing. That's what you'd hope for. But the reality isn't that from the perspective of the, usually the leave or, cause there's a leave and a leave or, yeah. and, and the person leaving the other that wants to stay in the relationship doesn't want it to end. So you're in a bad bargaining position. If you're a dude leaving a woman and she wants you to stay and family law is almost completely on her side. Well, to be honest, family law is mostly completely on the side of the person that makes more money that brought more to the table. If you have kids, it's also on the side of the person that gave birth to the kid. In, in most instances, because women are hypergamous by nature, they tend to marry across and up on the socioeconomic scale. So they tend to marry up to guys for the most part, not all women do. Um, so guys are in a position where they have to deal with that whole, okay, well, what do I deal with? You know, like, how do I deal with everything I brought to the table? How do I deal with my future income? You know, the notion that someone that you married for a few years has rights to a decade or decades or even a lifetime of your future income is absolutely absurd to me, given right. that men and women are equal under the, you know, the guise totally. of, you know, feminism today. Let's talk about that hypergamy. I basically sit here in my life and go, fucked. Like, what do I do? Right. I, if a woman dates lateral and up and a man dates, or sorry, a woman dates lateral and up and a, and a man dates sort of lateral and down when it comes to success and finances, status, and a woman is intelligent, that hurts her, earning, intelligence, whatever. Like, what the, what do I do? I'll tell guys in honesty that you're in a better position to marry a woman that's on the same par as you, if not higher. Right. Because that almost removes most of the risk of lo losing your nest egg and any, any future income. Um, my ex wife's a, a lawyer, you know, she's very successful. Um, so that really wasn't a huge issue as far as, you know, nest egg and division of assets. It was more dealing with, you know, the child custody issue because we've got sure. a daughter. Um, but for women that, you know, like you, like I assume that you've done well in life, you know, you've raced cars. Um, I don't know, you know, what the total record is, although I am a huge car enthusiast, but I don't watch I a lot of car are. racing. I don't, it's weird because I love driving supercars, but I don't like watching other people drive supercars. I don't find it as interesting as driving them myself. Yeah. Um, I, not gonna lie. I don't watch that much racing, but now that I do more commentating and I'm a yeah. host for, I do a little bit for F1 NASCAR and IndyCar. I obviously keep up with everything, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I really find the job they did on the Netflix series, um, drive to survive really good on the formula one thing, but it's, it's, it's gotta be difficult for you. If you're a successful woman to find a guy and get into a long-term relationship, because the thing with successful older guys is like men peak a, a little bit later on in life than women do, right? Like men reach their sexual market peak or in their late thirties. And the thing that women don't like is they peak in the early twenties. And that's just an unfortunate reality of the sexes. And it's always been that way. Men have always been success objects to women and women have always been beauty objects to men. So men tend to date younger women. Going to peak though. What does peak mean? Well, um, men are valued based on 
on their competency skills, what they can do, um, you know, the, like, that, like that little dent that they can put in the universe sort of thing. Whereas men don't usually care about women's degrees. They don't usually show a lot of interest in their degrees on the wall framed in mahogany with little letters after the name sort of thing. It's grand and it's noble and all that sort of stuff, but there's no guy that ever said, oh yeah, look at the degree on her, right? Guys will look at a woman and say, look at whatever on her or she's walking away sort of thing. That's how men operate. You know, they're, they're visual in the sense that they see women as beauty objects and they've always been treated as beauty objects, even though society so, tries to change that today. So peak then for women's appearance is early value, 20s. Value, actually. Um, it's, value. Yeah, it's I'm actually sure, yeah, based I'm on a lot of- I'm trying to understand what the peak is. And if peak yeah. is uh, fertility, is peak money, is peak beauty, is what's what's the peak? Well- that's that's the definition that they're trying to change today, right? Because we women have valued men based on what they can bring to the table, right? Like what resources they have available to them to provide and preside over the family and the children and protect and all that sort of stuff. Uh, women's value has historically always been around their beauty and their fertility. Um, you know, when they survey cross culturally across all continents, all religions. And they show a lineup of every man from 18 to like 75. I think the uh, survey was done under, uh, you know, a lineup of women from all ages, all the way up to 75 from 20. They universally almost all pick about 22, 23 year old women, you know, as far as like beauty standards. So that's just the way that society has always operated. So as a beautiful, attractive woman, maybe, you know, such as yourself, that's also had a successful career that's competent, influential on social media, uh, does commentating, you know, let's say on racing events and, and stuff like that. Um, there's not a lot of guys that are like, oh my God, she's, um, you know, her voice or, or her commentary on that program is so valuable to me. What guys look at is the beauty aspect of a woman, right? Like that's, that's why women wear makeup, dye their hair, you know, wear push-up bras and accentuate, you know, their body curves and their lines with things like heels and stuff like that. Um, as much as society wants to change that today and say, things like you're beautiful at any weight. Like that's one of the big lies that I think that feminism tells women is you're beautiful at any size. It's just not true, right? Um, there are standards that men are drawn to when it comes to beauty and obesity is not one of them. It's um, not healthy either. Like it's I, not healthy. I mean, either. Like I wouldn't want to invite a woman that's obese and diabetic into my life. I don't want to deal with that. There's a, a evil psychologist, his name's Dr. Ware, Dr. Warren Farrell. Uh, he's written several books. I think one, one of the ones that stood out was, uh, the myth of male power. And he's done a few others like the boy crisis and, and things like that. And one of the observations that he made over his uh, career, like, you know, decades of, of, of studying all this material is basically that you can distill it down to that men are success objects and women are beauty objects. And that's how the sexes view each other. Do you think that's right? doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. That's just how we've always viewed each other throughout history. I don't know. I mean... I think we we don't grow and evolve without a discussion, without changes. So it would imply that there's nothing wrong with anything and that there's no need to grow and evolve. And, you know, I think that, I don't know, I think that there's still a discussion around that. Is that the right thing? Is that is that right? Because I think that, you know, when we expand on that and we go into like value, I think I saw something that you had written that said, like, if you took sex out of mm. the uh, relationship, 90% of women would have nothing to offer. Yeah. And if you took money out of the relationship, then 90% of men would have nothing to offer women. Explain that. That's actually something that I came across in comedy, believe it or not. I get a lot of my material from comedy that I, you know, summarize in my videos and my um, social media. So if men lost their, their, their status, their success, the wealth, their influence, their competency, uh, in society, then 90% of women probably wouldn't stay with those guys. Like the reason why women generally leave relationships and marriages and women leave marriages 80% of the time, it's not generally men that leave marriages. It's generally women that leave. And when women leave, it's because they feel like they can do better with another guy, right? Um, this guy that I'm married to, that I've had my 2.1 kids in the white picket fence in the station wagon. He just sits around and watches sports all day. He's put on 150 pounds. He can't keep a job down. He doesn't even know how to change a light bulb. I have to call my dad to come over and take care of stuff like that. These are the sorts of things that women don't want to deal with, right? So when I speak to men, I'm constantly telling them chase excellence, right? Like you can't let your guard down. You can't retire. You cannot stop, you know, pursuing passion. You cannot stop putting a dent in the universe because if your wife, your woman, your girlfriend wakes up in the morning and she looks at you and thinks to herself, I'm stuck with a loser, there's a good chance she's probably going to leave, 
because marriage isn't forever anymore. You know, the knot is untied all the time. Um, we're not particularly good as a species at monogamy. So that's where that notion comes from. And on the flip side of the coin, I mean, if a woman is uh, like 90% of guys would leave relationships if sex was removed from the equation. If his wife or his girlfriend all of a sudden announced and said, look, I'm just going to become celibate. I've gotten right with God. I don't want to have sex anymore. I'm going to become you know, the Virgin Mary, whatever. He's going to be like, huh, that's interesting. Because the reason why I'm here is for access to easy, frequent, and you know, amazing sex. That's why really? guys get married. That's oh, yeah. it? That's the main reason why guys get married. Believe it or not, they think that when they get... See, the biggest complaint that guys have when they get married if you take a look at their Google search history is they start looking up words like, why doesn't my wife want to bang me? Why doesn't my wife want to have sex with me? How do I get my wife to have sex with me? Could you imagine being married as a, a man and you're Google searching? How do I get my wife to have sex with me? There's a lot of marriages out there that are completely sexless, right? So when you remove sex from the equation and the sad part of it is a lot of guys, they won't change that. They'll just resort to something like pornography. So they won't leave the relationship. They won't end the marriage. It's generally not to their advantage to do that because they'll lose so much. So they'll just stay. Lose what? Could be wealth, could be future wealth, could be access to their kids. It depends. Could be all those things. So you're saying there's nothing else that a woman offers if it isn't sex. They don't offer comfort. They don't offer safety. They don't offer companionship. They don't offer taking care of things. They don't offer planning nice things for someone. They don't offer cooking or cleaning or I didn't say that. like anything like that. No, I didn't say that. But women don't offer safety to me. I offer safety to women. Yeah, but all the other stuff you're talking about, comfort, companionship, love, all that sort of stuff, of course. But the main reason why men get into relationships with women is for sex. What areas of value is it that you believe a woman has beyond has to be more than sex? Well, I, I have greater standards than just sex, right? Like I have a girlfriend, yeah, she's, exactly. you know, she's got great culinary skills. She's fun to be around. We laugh, we joke, we have similar interests. Like I like cycling. So we go for bike rides a lot in the summertime. So okay. it, it's, it's beyond just sex, but the main reason why men mate select a woman is because of sexual intimacy. That's just the way, like, that's why we're here on the earth to scatter seed, right? We're not here to build skyscrapers and roads and drive electric cars. We're here to scatter seeds. Like that's our bio, that's our biological imperative. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from, if you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.